Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon, the final episode of the season. If you're still enjoying the series so far, do drop a like on the video. That would be glorious. If we could get 400, that would be spectacular. Uh, enjoy the highlights of the games we played this month. It's been a strangely topsy-turvy, but then not at all surprising topsy-turviness. And there's been more topsy turviness throughout the league. So uh, yeah, enjoy the highlights and I'll join you guys in a sec for the Liverpool game. In? Of course. <laughs> Well, there you go. Spurs won, Wimbledon nil. We're going to end up going on a losing streak to finish the season off and end up not winning the Premier League at this rate as well, aren't we? That's a goal. And it's 2-0 to Spurs. Spurs 2, Wimbledon nil. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. We've just not played that well. Well, there you go, guys. Spurs 2, Wimbledon nil. They were the better side, but you can already see where this is going. Someone goes around his man. We need a good cross now from him around. Back post. Fabio! And it's in off the crossbar. Wimbledon 1. Fulham 0. Fabio's 27th. We have to arrest this little tiny slide. The Spurs roll result was not good, but we need a good win here. He goes back for Peter. Peter goes through a few. Himself back for Salvi. Ball across, surely. Goes for Masak instead. Takes a touch into the top corner. What a great goal that is. Wimbledon 2. Fulham 0. And it does. That's his first goal of the season. And what a deserving player to get that goal. 2 0. Salvi's ball. Kenneth into the top corner and it's 3-0 to Wimbledon. That's a bit more like it. We've been much, much better today against the poor Fulham side, but now we need to carry this confidence into those final two fixtures. Achibar to Masek again. Into the side for Kenneth. Cross for Peter. Peter makes it 4-0 to Wimbledon. It's good to see him getting another goal as well. 18 for the season now, 4-0 to Wimbledon. This is what I call a response. There we go, Wimbledon 4, Fulham 0. That is much more like it. We go six points clear with two games to go, but City do have a game in hand and we've still got to go to Man United. Still could get dicey. Dybala does really well, brings it down, and it's 1-0 to Manchester United. Thoroughly deserved. They've been the better side so far. We've not really turned up. Um, it's still on the edge, but I think we basically... It's very difficult for us to throw the title away now. And all over the place. Gomez, of all people, to bring it away now. Oh, my days. I mean... <laughs> Tell you what, if we hadn't had that Fulham result, I guarantee you there was no way in hell we are going to win the league. Because look at this. We'll probably lose to Liverpool, too. Dybala's in there again, and it's 3-0 to Manchester United. I mean, they've been clinical. We've not been that bad, but 3-0. My goodness, guys, what are you doing? Dybala steps up, and it's 4-0 to Man United. Manquillo clearly took the ball. The ball wasn't even near the player, and it's somehow a penalty, but it's 4-0. Well, there you go, 4-0 Man United. 4 feels a little bit harsh, but what can you do? Um, Thank God for the Fulham game, I suppose. We really haven't turned up since that Watford game. Right, guys, we are back. Uh, no question of the day today, because otherwise it'd be stupidly long with the squad report and... And the Bolton update, which don't worry, I haven't forgotten about. That's become a little segment in these episodes now. I have kind of just noticed that. So, um, we've won the league, basically, as you would have just seen. Now, it's been less to do with us being good, more to do with City deciding that they're going to absolutely just throw it away. I don't know what's going on there. Like... At one point, us and City were nearly 20 points above Chelsea. And Chelsea have not been great this season, as you can see. But City, I don't know. It was like neither of us wanted to win it. That win against Fulham, I thought, was going to be the one that actually clinched it for us. And in the end, it actually was. But we could have won it without it in the end. Um, uh, the 4-0 the defeat against Manchester United was a bit of a woeful experience in general. Um, I don't think 4 was really deserved. But that's how it is. You know, we've rode our luck at times this season and done very well defensively. So still, 20 goals in 37 matches is still not bad. It really, really isn't. Uh, I just wish we hadn't had that one little slip up. But that's how it is, isn't it? That happens. Six points clear at the top in the end. Um... Yeah, City lost at home to Southampton. And, God, who else was it? I think they lost away at Sunderland as well. I think they might have lost another one as well. Because they're six points behind us now. It's really, really odd. The only thing I can think of is that they're still in Europe. And that might be the reason that they may be resting players for the league. Because they didn't think they were going to win it. But, you know... I don't know. It's the AI. What, how, we can not possibly hypothesize on why they do certain things. But as you can see, Salvi, top assister in the league again. He seems to have clawed his way back up after a slow start. Masek, it seems, is inevitably going to win the player of the season. We have Baltam and Salvi hopefully rounding up the top two. Unless Fabio scores five against Liverpool today, it's unlikely he's going to be top scorer. But he is right up there again. And the league's top goal scorers have been really low, or it feels like it anyway. Uh, Masek's up there on Man of the Match Awards. Galfra Scoli with 23 clean sheets in the league so far. Uh, look at that. Carver has got 18 yellow cards for Everton. That's impressive. It really, really is. Um, so, yeah, let's take a quick gander at the squad before we do anything. Is there anything else I want to quickly talk about? No, we'll do the Bolton update uh, after, of course. So, Fabio has 27 goals this year. Baltown, 21. Peter has 18. It's better. And if he keeps playing the way he does, did towards the end of this season, then uh, the next season, I see no reason why we need to replace him. I think next year he can flourish into a great player, given the chance to become one, basically. What's that mean? Promising a new contract, of course, yeah. I will be giving him one, because to be fair, he's not on huge money here. £41.5 million pounds he's worth now. He's three and a half stars. He seems to be reaching his potential a bit more now, although apparently he's reached it, which is weird. Um... I just thought he was like a four-star, five-star potential, but apparently my coaches have changed their minds on him. Um... 
But still, I think he's a good enough player to really carry us next season. I'm hoping that he can get sort of 25, 30 goals next year. That's the aim for what I want to see from Alexander Pida. But we'll talk about him later because we're going to do a squad report. Anyway, last five games, Alessandro Salvi and Baltan both above it on there. Baltan's only scored one more goal than last season, but still not bad. You know, our front four have all got 10 goals each in the league, and most of them have got at least... 10 assists as well uh, with Baltan needing one today to get it but Salvi I think he got 24 last season as well so yeah they're, they're pretty much averaging what they got last year now Liverpool are 13th in the league I remember they got relegated on my Portsmouth save so it's not that surprising I suppose um but I still think that with the way we've played lately, we've got to be serious about that. Thank God the morale's come back up thanks to us winning the division. Like, Achibar, I might have put him in here, but look, that match fitness, we can't afford to take that risk today. You know when Manquillo is fully fit and is just a better player? Um... Obviously, I'm going to have him on the bench, though, because we want to try and get that match fitness up. Not that it really matters now, because we've not got any more games. I, I wanted to be doing an FA Cup final there. I was going to drop, put the giraffe onesie on and go for it again, since it worked so well in the last game. Um, but there you go. We're going to have to try. That FA Cup is really going to be that bone that we're going to have to try and... Con Next year, Champions League and FA Cup. Those are my two priorities. Uh, League Cup can go fuck itself. And the League, I'm... Well, obviously, in the League, we're going to make sure that we try and get in the top three, really. Um... But obviously we'll try and win it, of course. But what I mean is that I will be resting players before Champions League games uh, to make sure that we get the maximum available points. Available, you know. Um, or Champions League, this, that, and the other. So make sure we win our group. Um, hopefully our coefficient will be slightly better. But I don't know, because we've not performed that well lately, have we? So look at that front four, though. They really have contributed so much. Masek, it still astonishes me that the likes of Dortmund um, put in a bid for him of £4 million for a player that is worth... Well, for, for, for a start, he's worth stupid money more than that. But the fact is that the AI can still d somehow justify putting bids of 4 million with no add-ons in for players like Masic is crazy. Fabio, it's, re ooh, it's ricocheting all over the place. Zissa and Pires, presumably not Robert Pires, uh, in goal there for Liverpool. 86 points. I don't think it's as many as we had last year as it happens. But we've pl for me, we've played better than last year uh, for the most part. Or was it? I don't know how many points we got last year. We'll check at the end. We've started this game incredibly strongly. What I might do, actually, let's just quickly check. Uh... Not really a lot to go on there, is there? But what we'll probably do is just drop the tempo down a little bit more just to ensure that... Oh, that's not the right button. Do we get a chance to actually take some of these opportunities? Because clearly they're going to come. Uh, we started this game very, very strongly. After seven minutes, we've already had seven shots. But I want to get a few less ones from range. As long as... I mean... Given the way we played against Manchester United and Tottenham, part of me thought we were going to lose this game because we did not look good in those games. And it's a shame, but I feel like the confidence just dropped a bit after the Watford game, which is understandable, I guess. Which, to be fair, we've rode our luck at times this year and we've had some really solid performances defensively and against some of the bigger sides away and at home. Um, so I guess it was we were bound to come a cropper eventually there. But the point is, we've done enough to get over the line. That little dip in the middle of the season, a little dip towards the end. But for the most part, we've been pretty much flawless, particularly against sides towards the lower ends of the table. Peter's through and Peter makes it 19 goals for the season. If he grabs one more today and hits the big 20, that would be perfect for me because I said I wanted to see 20 out of him this year, basically double what he got for us last year. But frankly, I'd settle for 19 and I'd see enough progress there for me to not have to go out and buy another striker in the summer because I think Peter is just fine. Um, he's scoring goals, he's getting assists. 19 goals and 12 assists is pretty damn good. Horrific play from, I don't know who it was. Actually, it was the goalkeeper. Peter intercepts it and he's in lethal and that's what i want to see that lethal type of finishing that the likes that millington had basically and marcelo di placido that type of finishing i want to see him score a hat trick for us for the first time i think next season will be the year he does that though uh that's a bit poor but mankir is still in can he get the cross oh no yes he can no he can't yes he can one of these he's it's a bit tight but he still gets it in Salvi's in this time. Oh, Peter's in again. And it is 2-0 to Wimbledon on 12 minutes. And Peter now has his 20th goal of the season. Come on, Peter. You can get that hat-trick today. I believe in you. Believe in the Peter. I don't know what Manquillo... He's so good in these areas to take players on. Salvi... Uh, oh, no. It was actually... Wow. Just terrible defending from Liverpool. Again. Um, mimicking some of the way they've played in real life this season, to be fair. Uh, let's see. But, I mean, I don't know what I even need to check at this point. Liverpool have actually done nothing in this game so far. Their possession's appalling. They've not had a shot yet. They've... I mean, what? I'm trying to find a redeeming quality of the way they've played so far. At home, we seem to have... You know, I think at home we are astonishingly good. Next year, I'd like to go unbeaten at home if possible, because, you know, that would just be nice. This year, we've lost at home to City. Uh, in a game which was just... We, they were just better, and we just didn't turn up. But, you know, we've had a few defeats this year, which sucks, but... 
if we can start off strong next year and get ourselves a bit of a lead before the Champions League stuff kicks in, that would be ideal. Uh, but again, it does depend on where the fixtures lie. If we can get some of the uh, tougher games out the way while we've still got... Um, a really fresh squad that'd be pretty ideal which might be one of the reasons why we did so well the season that we won the title last year because we played all the big teams so early on and did really well against them uh russia brie liverpool do look like they want to play those balls over the top and that's fine well oh brian really brian uh then again we're two nil up they've not had a shot yet i'm actually perfectly content to i mean unfortunately that's we don't even have one. oh we got achabar okay we'll we'll be fine we'll be fine uh yeah, it's going to have to be. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, yeah, I want Achibar on for Farmer, is what I want. And then he can move back like that. And then we'll push Masak into the middle. That's the only thing I can think of to do right now. It's a shame to get Sammy Farmer off right now, but Achibar's going to get a run out. I'm actually going to stay on the system that we're playing at the moment and just feel out where this game's going. We're going to go to a more mixed approach, though. All right, Liverpool have had a shot already, so we'll just sort of see um, if they are going to try and come at us or not. That will be the sort of gauge. If they start having some shots and chances, all right, okay, we might have to sort of adjust things for the second half. Um, but then again, I'm not really that fussed. If Achibar had got sent off then from two yellows in the space of 10 minutes after coming on, I would have, well, I mean, told him he doesn't have to come in tomorrow. Not that he would anyway, because of course it's, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. Masek now. Inside for, hmm. We're starting to look a little bit shaky here, and I'm thinking dropping deeper was probably a sensible idea. Maybe at half time. We'll just have to see where we get to. Baltam's got a chance to run at people, though. Can he knock it back across? He can. Masek in for Peter. Can he slip it through for someone? He can. That man is Fabio, and that man has put it in the back of the net. He's offside, isn't he? God damn it, Fabio. Oh, sorry. I just really needed a drink. Okay. Wow, we're actually going to. Uh, City not winning again. They really have been so poor towards the end of this season. Uh, oh, yeah, he is definitely offside. But they really have finished off with really poor form. And I don't know why, but I can only assume it's because of their Champions League form. Um, or not Champions League form, but the fact that they're playing in the Champions League still, I think. Or is it the Europa League? I, I definitely saw them playing in a some kind of international... No, you know what I mean. Um, European fixture, so to speak. Baltam's not had a good game so far. He really, really hasn't. But we don't have Iser on the bench today. Um, we have been excellent, but not you, Brian. Bad Brian. That was really, really unacceptable. Um, not what we needed to see, but thank God Peter's goals have carried us through. Let's check the uh, Prozone stats, see what we're doing. Hmm. It's all about the wings still, isn't it, really? I think we should probably just do that for the second period. I'm quite content to stick with what we've got at the moment. Um, try and put the pressure on Liverpool, even with 10 men. I feel like we're strong enough to beat them, even with the 10 players at the moment. Because uh, we've managed to shuffle this team around a little bit. And yes, the defence is going to be slightly more exposed, um, having no defensive midfielder, but... It doesn't seem to have affected us too badly so far. Now, Coutinho will probably get on the ball a little bit more. That, that's what I would say. But unless he can do something with it, it, it's irrelevant. This is where he'll put one in the top corner. So don't worry. My words have now are about to come back to haunt me. I'm almost certain of it. Uh, Spurs have sort of moved up the league a little bit as a result of that win over us. But Liverpool, I mean, they can't drop any further, I don't think. Uh, unless No, they actually can't drop any further. But still, 13th is not really good enough for Liverpool. Uh, okay, so they've offered nothing so far in the second half. I wasn't even paying attention to the game and they did nothing. Fabio, let's get Kenneth on for a little bit. And I want to keep Peter on just in case there's a chance of a, a late winner. Uh, not a late winner, you know what I mean. And we're going to get Ballesta on for Cabrera, who's looking complacent. Uh, yeah, I just want to see if there's a chance for maybe a late hat-trick completion. Or if we win a penalty, he'll get to take it because of that thing in the game where if they're on a hat-trick they take it automatically uh, he's already missed one of those this season i think um we've not hit the target enough today we've hit it enough to score twice but i would like to see a little bit of a high percentage but ah, we'll take it it looks like it is going to be a 2-0 win for wimbledon because since we went down to 10 men liverpool have not really done a lot to be honest and that's fine by me um i guess it sort of proves why they're down there doesn't it though peter get in the box this is where we need you mate this is going to go near post i think or is Baltam going to lose the ball maybe Surprising from Imran and Mukhtar, actually. That's a nice play. Oh, hello. Is there a chance for Icardi? That's going to be because of our high line and they've hit the post. It'd be nice to keep a clean sheet on the end here uh, to get 24 for the season and better our tally of clean sheets from last season, which I believe was 22. Dotzel has just taken down Peter and that should be good to go for us, really, for the rest of the game now. Don't see us conceding two in this time. Um, oh, City have actually scored a goal. My God, they might actually win a game. Um, bit late for that, but then again... I think our home form in the end is what's carried us over the line. Because I think if we were a bit shaky home and away coming into this final fixtures, I think we probably would have lost all four of them. I genuinely do. That must have been close from City. Who were they playing? Oh, they're playing Palace. 
2-0. Mm, okay, that's weird. They must have scored the goals late on. Um, Ipswich, 24 points. They obviously picked up a few towards the end of the season. They managed to get some points on the ball, but Bournemouth and Blackburn go down. Everton stay up by the skin of their teeth. Uh, in fact, they beat Leicester, and that was enough to keep them up because Bournemouth lost 4-0 to Chelsea. Still, best defence in the division. What? 80 goals, my God. Best defence in the division and the most, uh, most scored as well, so that's pretty much all you want, plus 59 goal difference. I want to compare our tally this year at 89 points to when we won the league uh, last time around last season and see if there is any comparisons we can make we've definitely conceded less goals seven less although i really wish we hadn't conceded those four to man united then it would have been 11 less but you know you've got to compensate that sometimes you're just going to have that happen hopefully uh, we'll just skip to the point where something's actually happening now two hours later Right, guys, sorry, that took absolutely ridiculous lengths of time. Uh, but Alessandro Salvi does win it in the end, but Guida has made a good run at catching him towards the end. Masek will win that, but we'll go through that sort of stuff in the uh, analysis episode. Sadly, uh, Ferreira's two goals against Palace drops Fabio, uh, Fabio out of the top three, which, which kind of sucks, but what can you do? So, before anything else, we're going to go through the other leagues and then do a squad report. So, other leagues, championship, so far, what's happening with that? Playoff final is Sheffield United versus Huddersfield. That's really rather cool, because... I'd like to see Sheffield United come up. That'd be really cool. Who else has gone up, though? Middlesbrough and West Ham. So those sort of sides are kind of yo-yoing between these divisions at the moment. Charlton leads, and Sheffield Wednesday go down, which is uh, a shame for them. League One, we've got... Who have we got? Leighton Orient against the McDonald's in the League One final. McDonald's just keep yo-yoing again, don't they? Uh, Notts County and Bradford City go up into the championship. Notts County to the championship, folks. That's kind of cool. Carlisle, Northampton Town, Wolves go down to League Two. With Scunthorpe United, Wolves have been relegated to League Two. Deary me, guys. Deary, deary me. There's a guy called Akeem Virtue. That's a lovely name. Kieran Trippier's playing for Leighton Orient. That's a strange thing. What we got for League Two? Wigan, forgot they were in League Two, have beaten Coventry City in the League One, uh, League Two playoff final. Up go Wickham, Walsall and Stevenage. Ebbsfleet still doing a bloody good job there. Blackpool relegated to the conference. Not quite Bolton, but I think they might be playing Bolton next year, though, because I'm pretty certain Bolton were winning the division when I last checked, but we'll just have a little gander in a sec. Into the National League. Top of it are... Oh, AFC Telford are going up into the Football League. Nice to see that. Rochdale and, uh, yeah, them. Barrow, Whitehawk, Maidenhead and Margate go down. And let's try to get ourselves to Conference North. I'm pretty certain Bolton won it. Uh, Bradford Park Avenue have gone up into the conference having beaten Tamworth. And Bolton were champions of the Vanarama North. Yeah, the big one. Um, so well done them. Let's see who's managing Bolton now. Anyone we recognise? Scott Sinclair is managing Bolton. <laughs> of course he is. That makes perfect sense. That's fantastic. Okay, so yeah, Bolton are going up to the conference. Can they do it? Russell, Blythe and Histon go down and we'll check, we may as well check Conference South just in case we're not leaving anyone out. Dover, after extra time, go up against Gosport. Up go Torquay with 101 points. Down go Bishop, Stortford, no. Hampton and Richmond and Hendon. So let's do a squad report now, guys. Um, so we're just going to start at the top with Fabio. What a man, what a man. Four, three and a half stars now. He seems to be falling, but I don't think he actually is falling because he's only 26 and he finally scored a goal for Brazil about bloody time. I love him. I adore this man. £44 million pounds is worth. He's on a new contract, which has got three more years left. He didn't want any more money. What a lad. Sammy Farmer. Four and a half star player. £62 million. Pounds. Remember, he does still have a release clause in his contract, as far as I remember. Um, so we may still have to take that on. But frankly, I don't know why he'd want to leave. We've just won the Premier League back-to-back -back times. We've won two trophies this year and done a double, which is glorious. Would have loved the FA Cup too, but you know how it is. Probably from Watford will end up winning the final against either Arsenal or Liverpool. Maybe that's why Liverpool was so crap. I don't know. Maybe they're resting players for in the final. I don't know whether they got there or not. Uh, Fowler, great player. Martin Gaffrascoli, amazingly only a three-star player in this team now. I don't know why he's declining, but it could just be because we just played a game. It, it baffles me that he's only three stars in this team. But again, it's, maybe it's just because he's a goalkeeper and it's irrelevant because he's the best goalkeeper we've ever... I think probably, probably the best I've ever had on FM. Bigger Bolongo wasn't this good. Brian Gomez. Now, although, you know, I think what I might... I don't know, I'm tempted to start playing him at centre-back, but we need to actually find a solid left-back. So one of the things I might look at in the summer is the idea of actually finding a really good left-back. But I tried that before with Makula and it just didn't work out. So it'll be a case of if I can find him, we'll get them. If not, then I, then I won't. And speak of the devil, and the devil shall appear. It's Makula. He's got some attitude problems, I think, and that's kind of been a part of the issue for him. He's got decent enough stats, but defensively, he's been very suspect. And I think he's been sent off... Uh, yeah, he got sent off in the Capital One Cup in the game when I really gave him his chance. And he's just... I mean, he's done okay in some of those games but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more out of him frankly although he does have that attacking threat but I feel like at the back he's very very suspect Javi Mankio he might be 31 years old but there's no way in hell I'm turfing this lad out he's still a very good player 7.62 in the league five assists he dribbles for days he's just a wonderful wonderful player and it's amazing that at this point in my save and I still have a real player in the squad that surprises me Roman Masek now 
Ah, 39 million now he's worth. Dortmund can go sod themselves. He must win player of the season. If he doesn't, there'll be a travesty. And we'll probably still get bids of like 10 million for him, despite being the best player in the Premier League, according to the stats. But it does feel like his position just seems to be a ratings machine. It really does. Mateus, only two stars in this team. But I still think as a backup, he's the perfect player for that. He's got a few goals this year, you know. 12 in total in 19 starts, which is not bad. I don't think he'll ever be a starter for us, which is a shame because that's kind of what I wanted from him. But there you go. Warren Millington, he's been out on loan and he is on loan at Bournemouth. Uh, not really been emphatically great, but it would just be useful to have him, frankly. Edgar Neves Magales. He... Uh, I had someone ask me why I wasn't playing him very much. The fact is, he's like the third best player in that position. So Kenneth will always come in front of him. So... I've had to. I've tried to play him when best I can. He's made 23 appearances for us this year, so it's not superb. But, you know, it was always very difficult to get players like this in, particularly when they're in a position that already has players. And I was expecting injuries with Kenneth and Fabio, but they just haven't this year. So that's, that's good. Uh, Peter, of course, what a man. £41 million pounds he's worth now. And when I get him that new contract, maybe that will go up even further. I must remember to do that, though. Alessandro Salvi, £55 million he's worth. Still only a four-star player in this team, though, but... Oh, I, I love him. So, he's such a good player. He's His assists. I wish there was a way we could see how many assists he's got in his career. We'll have to look at that towards the end when I do a looking back uh, type of looking forward thing. But remember, um, at the end of my saves, I do a thing where we'll zoom into the future and see how people's careers turned out, basically, to see if I was right or wrong about set players. Or Because what usually happens is the moment that I leave, the entire squad gets sold, which is a real shame, uh, which seems ridiculous. But that's generally what happened with Portsmouth, I think. Isa Tolson, um, he's on a lot at Millwall. I don't know if he's ever going to get much of a game for us because, again, there's players in front of him in the squad. Unsel Aiseki, he's there, basically. And I feel like he's probably more... I prefer to play him in that position than I do Achebar because he's more of a fullback type of player. Achebar has his own uses. Kenneth... You know, as much as he has the same level of current ability as Edgar Neves, he's got that extra potential. And that's why I want to see if we can reach, get him to reach a bit of that. Because I don't know how good he actually is, but my scouts seem to reckon he's good. And that seems to have unwavered in a team that we've got players that reach that and that are world class. Which means I feel like he has the potential to be world class. Uh, Prefate Werle... He's on, a ro he's on loan at Malma. Um, I don't know how much of a game time he's going to get. He was another one of those ones I brought in. And he's got decent tackling and decent marking. Heading's a bit poor. So he might be one of those ones that could improve to that level. But I'm still not really sure. Joseph Zissa. Now, averaging 6.99, it's still not great. But I just don't feel like centre-backs in this system that we play get good ratings. Because the fact is, before that Man United game, we'd only conceded 16 times in the Premier League. So clearly, defensively, we're doing something right. I just think that... They just don't seem to get good ratings. But that's just how it is sometimes. Achibar, he's a really, really good player. He really is. And I think in any other team, he'd be starting week in, week out. And he's still made, you know, what's that? 36 appearances for us. It's just that there are other players in every area of the pitch where he is slightly worse than them. Um, but that makes him the perfect utility man for us. And, I'm and he, since he's happy to stay as a key player and he never complains, we're happy to keep him. Uh, Arna will be leaving to join Basel, so there's no problems with him. Ernesto Ballesta. I thought we'd get more from him. I, I really did. He's not been as good as I was expecting. Although I think maybe some more game time. I'm still pretty pleased with his performances overall. Could do with being a little bit higher, but again, centre-backs. Imran Baltan, 59 million. What a player. The only stat he's got below 11 now is his corners. Astonishing. I, I don't know if he can get any better than that. He's not quite five-star. I actually have had a five-star, five-star player, and that was Marcelo Di Placido. My God, did he deserve to be a five-star, five-star player. But... Baltam is a quality, quality player, and I feel like he's going to be key for us next year. Bonnie is another one I feel like there's room for him to get better and better and better, and I want to make sure he gets some game time in order for him to achieve that. Cabrera, kind of glad I brought him in. He's one of the few defenders that have really managed to stand out in this back four with his 18-18-18 defending stats, and look at that strength as well. Quality, quality player. And Diallo might be able to move him on in the summer because he doesn't play for us at all, basically. He's made one, sorry, four games in the Premier League and he's worth a bit of money. So maybe we could get rid of and get some serious cash for him. Eisler, he will be leaving in the summer. Uh, I've decided because he wanted so much money to me, for me to re-extend his contract. Like 160,000 was the cheapest I could get him. And it's just not worth it, I don't think. Because we can clear up that money and bring someone else in to play on that left-hand side. And maybe what I'll do. Um, because he's only a backup to Baltam anyway. Everton, still worth £27 million, amazingly. And again, I might try and move him on as well because he's not played enough. But you never know. Cook him in handy for rotation next year. And we're back to Fabio. So... That's how things have finished, guys. We have won the Premier League for the second year in a row. It's a shame we weren't able to go and win the FA Cup. The Champions League was just completely... 
Ah, just one of those things, I suppose. Next year, though, it's all about the Champions League. That's where we're going to be focusing our efforts. Obviously, there'll be an analysis video, which will be probably a bit shorter because I'm not really sure where we're going to be analysing things uh, this year. But that will still be up, don't worry. And then, obviously, transfer window goodies tomorrow. So, if you guys have enjoyed this season and we've won the Premier League again and the League Cup, do smash the like button. That would be glorious. If you're still enjoying it, that would be fantastic. And I will join you guys in the next episode for some transfer goodies. I look forward to that. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.